It is another No Facebook November episode. Of course, you can listen to it whenever you want. You don't have to turn it off just because it's not November. Boy, that's so silly. What we're going to talk about in this episode, me and my guest, is something so near and dear to my heart. And actually, I think you could even say like the first media bug that bit me was radio. That has since translated into podcasting. Podcasting, doing this show, I do some other podcasts. It's just so near and dear to my heart. And so I thought, why not bring in a guest so near and dear to my heart? His name is Aaron Hodges. He's the founder and president of You Lucky Dog Productions. They are an independent comedy record label and a production company. And he just recently started You Lucky Dog Podcasts. It's a podcast production company. So who better? He's funny, no pressure at all. If he comes on and bombs, we're just going to not produce this episode. So that's easy enough. You should also know that before he launched You Lucky Dog Productions, Aaron worked in satellite radio with me. Not for me. Not at all for me. Totally different departments. But that's where we met. He worked as a board operator. He's been a producer, is a producer, a host comedy channel programmer. This guy knows where it's at. He's a great addition to the Tripod Show family. You can learn more all about what he does at youluckydogproductions.com and his new service, youluckydogpodcast.com. So you can go learn more about him, but stay tuned right here because now you're going to learn a lot more about podcasts. You're listening to Tripod, a podcast produced by Tricycle Creative to help safely navigate creative business owners through the worlds of digital marketing, strategic content creation, and business growth. Host Ross Herosian is a marketing consultant, content creator, and entrepreneur who brings you helpful tips, social media updates, inspiring interviews, and his own unique perspective on how to tell your story and grow your business. So if you're interested in being a better marketer, business owner, or creator, sit back, relax, and let's get pedaling. Aaron, welcome to Tripod. Hi, Ross. Thanks for having me, man. It's a real pleasure to be a guest on this show. Yeah, a little pulling back the curtain a little. Aaron produces my podcast, so he's always having to listen to me. (laughs) <laughs> whether he likes it or not. <laughs> well, Ross, recently I've changed my perspective on things uh, and okay. I, I think it's changed my whole attitude in life where sometimes you have this attitude that you have to do things and now I've changed that to I get to do things. Oh, how very right? positive of you. So I get to work on your podcast wow. and I get to hear you speak a lot. What an honor. Just like the (laughs) listeners out there, they get to listen to this episode. And if they haven't listened to other episodes in this series, I definitely recommend you go back and do that because we were just talking before the show. You've been producing these No Facebook November episodes. And, you know, a lot of this stuff, you're really the first person to hear it. And you've even found it's like, hey, you know, this is some helpful, useful stuff. No, it really is. And I mean, that goes for even the previous episodes that aren't necessarily related to no Facebook November. I mean, there's lots of good info here that you're giving away to people for free. It's free, people. It's free. You'll receive an invoice actually later. You don't know (laughs) this yet, but I've got your email address and you will be invoiced appropriately for as many podcasts as you listen to. That's how it works. Uh, No, you won't be getting an invoice. But you're here today because... In this series, but also in this podcast, I've talked about SEO, we've talked about YouTube, we've talked about other social channels, we've talked about owned platform, we talk about marketing strategy, content creation, and you know, weirdly enough, on this podcast, haven't talked much about podcasting itself. So I wanted to bring you on to do that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So my big thing with podcasting is that just to start, and you know, and I want to preface this to say. You don't have to quit Facebook to do any of the stuff that I've been talking about the last couple episodes. You can do it in addition. That's just the role. I, that's just the, what I've been doing this month. Podcasting is an incredibly powerful medium. And why I like it so much is because you, you can get a lot of juice for the squeeze. Every single client, business owner, entrepreneur, solopreneur that I talk to, 
they're all pressed on time. We're all pressed on time. And when it comes to content creation, I'm a big believer that a podcast is a great way that you can create one piece of content and then get so much more out of it. You can incorporate it into your website. You can incorporate pieces into your sales. You can incorporate pieces into your email marketing. You can incorporate pieces into social media. And so with that, I kind of want you to talk just a little bit, Aaron, about how we've worked together. So when you get my show audio, Mm -hmm. right? Like what, what do you do with it? And, and like, what's the kind of thing that we've set up that I think other people could certainly duplicate? Oh yeah. So, um, you're very good at repurposing things. And, and I, so I just want to give you a shout out for that. Um, the marketing game is tight over there at Tricycle Creator. So <laughs> Thank shout you. Out, shout out to you on that. And uh, we've sort of developed the system. When I say we, I mean mostly you. But uh, you send me the the audio and it's usually raw files. Sometimes it's just the stereo mix. You know, we're flexible. So yeah, I take the, the files that you give me and you got to sort of examine it and see what the problems are. Maybe there's too much noise from the guest or there's distortion or something like that. When you say noise, you just mean background noise, not actual just their talking noise. Well, it could be both. (laughs) You know, it it, it could be be both. (laughs) I mean, I'm looking at it like as an audio engineer and also as a producer, right? So you could be talking about like hot air that someone's speaking. So I try to tell people that I work with that I'm here to protect you, you know? So as an editor, I'm not going to let you sound like an idiot. I think that's an important part of working with, you know, a podcast services or somebody that you, you develop that trust that they're going to make you sound good. Not to say that yours is a lot of work. It's not because you, you know what you're talking about and you bring on very knowledgeable people. So it's not a lot of fluff that has to get cut out, but there are, some audio issues sometimes, you know? So it's basically just kind of, kind of examining that and uh, just cutting out some of the uhs, ahs, stutters, things like that. So what Aaron doesn't tell you is I actually send him, typically my podcasts are three to four hours long <laughs> and he cuts them down to about 30 minutes to an hour. But I, let me just say this, right? Yes, I have a history in broadcasting, but... No matter what level skill set you are, having a producer, I love what you said there. You're here to protect Mm -hmm. the host and make sure that essentially they don't sound dumb. I have loved having you aboard for that type of thing because I am a type of person also. It's like, I know I can always improve. If you're just getting started doing this or want to get started, you want someone like Aaron in your corner because he's going to help you get better, right? He said some things to me that, listen, sometimes they're rough to hear, but you need to hear them. And, and I think that's really, really great about, you know, bringing on some, and we'll talk a little bit later in this episode about the full kind of slate of services you provide, but, you know, getting into the repurposing of the content, the thing there is we also came in very, and I say we, I know you said mostly me, but this was collaborative. And I said, okay, this is the benefit of working with. Aaron, because oftentimes I will also assist him with some of his clients is, okay, how to, again, do we get the most juice for the squeeze? So one thing we do is we've also set up this thing where it's like, okay, produce the full show, but then cut out and give me a clip, uh, a piece of uh, clip audio. And when that happens, I then take it and make a graphic from it, can use that on social media, on Instagram, on it, when and if I go back to Instagram and Facebook, on LinkedIn, even on YouTube. You know, you can take these clips, you can repurpose them. You can not only make them kind of animated clips, but you could make them what's called pull quotes. You mm-hmm. can use them to pull a quote out. So, you know, Aaron has a really, really great ear of catching content that's really good in a bite sized capacity. And that just comes with time and working with a producer. Right. And I think when you are a creative, when you're a business owner, when you're a solopreneur, yeah, you don't have that much time. And and what you don't want to do is spend time on something that maybe won't be particularly fruitful or have much return. But I mean, would you agree, Aaron, that like as far as content creation goes, podcasting is 
I think one of the easier things to do. I think so too. I mean, you hear a lot about every business needs to be a media business and it can be really daunting, really intimidating to think about what you're going to put out there. And I think as far as the barrier to entry and the execution of of reaching people in some kind of media, I think podcasting is probably the easiest one to execute. And not to say that it isn't hard work and doesn't require planning and being very thoughtful about it. But in terms of actually executing it, I think if you're the type of person that can speak into a microphone and not get red light syndrome and get all shaky and worried about what you're saying into a microphone, then you should probably do a podcast if you're thinking about it. I I think it's a really easy way to reach people. If you are one of those people too, we're going to talk a little later in this episode about what you can kind of do about that. And I've actually talked about that in a prior tripod episodes when it comes to video, getting over those jitters. But I will say oftentimes people who are a little shy or nervous, it's oftentimes the camera shyness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, And so, sure, we actually record this podcast in both audio and video, and I'm selective, like, okay, what video goes out, that kind of thing. So you don't need to do a video podcast. You can do an audio only podcast. And I think at least just cutting out that aspect, um, you know, my, my dad always used to say I have a face for radio. (laughs) <laughs> so doing radio was easier than doing video yeah. because it's less, slightly less intimidating. Um, and so, you know, I, I have done many uh, podcast episodes in my pajamas, maybe <laughs> even without a shirt on. Who's to say what Ross does when no he does these podcasts? No pants podcast. No pants podcast. Tune in. I'm not wearing pants right now. So the thing about it is it's very easy to do. I think it's, and I think to that point, it's incredibly accessible for the content creator, mm-hmm. but it's also super accessible for your audience. Yeah. I mean, podcasts go everywhere. The way that people listen to podcasts, you're usually doing something else besides listening to that podcast, right? You're jogging, you're washing the dishes. Maybe you're walking a dog or you're shooting hoops. I know you're shooting hoops all the time. Always shooting hoops. I actually, I've, I've listened to your fantastic podcast all pro lines many a times <laughs> while lifting weights so i want you oh, i want you now wow. to get the visual i want wow. you to get the visual and i wear one of those old timey <laughs> outfits where it's like a it's like a onesie <laughs> and the the barbells are like big circles like you know like they're the big like circles on the end and and that's i'm in my backyard i want your show to be ruined by that visual now that that's when I listen to your show. Yeah, when we do the two minute drill, I'm just gonna picture you in your onesie <laughs> hanging out with Uncle Rico for sure. <laughs> that's a crazy <laughs> visual, but the point is, I think sure. that the, the consumption of podcasts is something that's kind of special because I think in a way you can trigger memories, right? You're gonna sort of sink into people's subconscious some ways, and I know that this, this sounds sneaky and manipulative and all that shit, but I think in the way that like a if you smell something, it takes you back to a place like so I could be listening to a podcast and I mean, maybe some people are going to listen to all pro lines now since you mentioned it. And now they're going to associate that with you in a onesie. Wow. Or I could be listening to say like I was listening to a previous podcast. I'm going to give a shout out to your guest, Hillary. She said something about TikTok, right? You asked her who should be on TikTok. And her answer was. Anybody that can keep up with TikTok and is creative, right? If you can keep up with it and you're creative, you should do it. And, you know, I'm listening to that down by the river, right? So next time I go down to the river, I might think about that. If I'm thinking about TikTok, things can really stick into your subconscious and really sink in. Like if somebody makes a good point that that sticks out to you from a business owner perspective, right? If you're trying to get something across, a valuable service or whatever it may be, people may associate that with another memory in your life, right? Because that's just the way that you listen to podcasts. So yeah, I think- and I think just because it is passive doesn't actually mean it's not powerful. In right. fact, I think it means that it is, just what I said, more accessible. Because, yeah, you can listen to a podcast while you're cooking dinner or while you're raking the leaves or while you're in your onesie lifting weights like I do. You know, you can do that. And I think there's value there. So- 
let's put the visual of me in a onesie aside if you can. Good luck, everyone. I ruined <laughs> you. And let's talk about who is podcasting best for. I think that if you are a current or aspiring thought leader, someone I think that has a certain maybe specific subject matter expertise, I think a podcast is a great place for you. I think the other thing too is if you're out there and you're a business owner, solopreneur with a story to tell or a very specific voice, then podcasting could be a really, really great content medium for you. Would you agree? 100%. I mean, I could tell you a quick story about me personally. I mean, I was looking for a local lawyer so I could walk into an office and just speak yeah. to somebody. And I'm having trouble getting anybody to call me back, right? Everybody's mm -hmm. busy. My little issue that's going to make them $200 isn't worth yeah. it for them to call me back type of thing. Yeah, right? you you, ha you, don't ha you don't have a, a at work slip and fall. <laughs> right. <laughs> you weren't hit by a commercial <laughs> truck. Right. I'm just yeah. trying to find like the statute of limitations on jaywalking, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm online looking for certain firms and one of them has a podcast. So I start listening to them. Two people are co-hosting the thing and I hear the way that they're speaking and I hear their vibe. I hear their knowledge. And I said, hey, I think I like these people. They sound like they know what they're talking about. They sound like they're easy to talk to. And I think that's the biggest reason why, if you're a business owner, that you should have a podcast somewhere featured on your website. I look at it like um, sort of like networking, right? Or even just like talking to somebody in person. You know how like that moment, Ross, and I know this, you're very captivating, so I'm sure this happens to you a lot. Uh huh. <laughs> but that moment when you realize that someone's actually leaning in and actually listening to you. Totally. That's what having a podcast on your website sort of is. And not even necessarily on your website, right? Just podcasting in general. This day and age, not a lot of people are stumbling on podcasts. Correct. So you're probably finding a podcast very much on purpose and hitting play, right? Mm -hmm. So someone sort of actually is either into you or the subject matter that you're into, right? Well, I think also you're dead on. I love that story about the lawyer. Good luck with your public indecency case, by the way. <laughs> um, says the guy who just talked about lifting weights in a onesie in his backyard. But nonetheless, here's the reality. I am currently in Austin, Texas. There are a thousand other digital marketing agencies, right? That do similar things that I do. However, um, I want to appeal to a certain type of person. And I think that's where having a podcast, or let's even say by extension, having content where someone can see you or hear you and get to know you better is super valuable. And this is why I even brought it up to start that you can incorporate this into your sales materials. I have my podcast sprinkled throughout my website, sprinkled throughout even my sales materials, because I feel like it's a way that people can almost like raise their hand and either opt in or, or, you know, opt in or opt out. Like, Hey, I get this guy's vibe. I like it a lot. I dig him. I like that. Right. Maybe mm -hmm. some people won't like my, you know, semi-casual approach. That's fine. It's fine for them to go away. But that might be just as valuable as the people that want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're so right. That's the thing that if you're out there listening to this, this is true, podcasting or not, having people themselves determine that they, you know, that you're maybe not a good fit, that's okay, right? If they're truly like, because chances are they may, th that might be a nightmare client for you, right? Mm -hmm. I really want to, particularly when it comes to my coaching, I want to work with people who, you know, are of a certain type. They get me. They like to work with me. They like my personality. They get my sense of humor, you know, and if that's not you, that's okay because that relationship might be doomed from the start. And I think that's where podcasting and we talked, I talked last episode about YouTube and even blog writing 
but just content creation as a whole can be super valuable. And talking about the repurposing, you know, you can do a podcast and this is what I do. You know, you can do a podcast, you can get a clip to share on social media. Great. Then guess what else? You can write a blog around the podcast. You have valuable SEO benefit. You can take that blog post. You can share that on your social media too. You can put that in your email. You can cut it up into different clips. If you go onto our web player at tripodpodcast.com, you can actually use the chaptering. You can jump to different sections, specific sections of the show. I'd love for you to listen to the whole thing, but you can jump to just, oh, I just want to hear him talk about this. You can do that online. So like it presents me with, so much like dividends from the, let's just call it two hours that I put into it. I love the way that you compare it to dividends. It is. I only want to deal with stocks that give me dividends, right? So that's where my mentality is. And to, to think about your podcast as a stock that also pays out dividends is a fantastic analogy because after you record the podcast and hit publish, There's many ways to reuse and repurpose that content like you just spoke about. So I think that that's something that should also be considered as far as how to market your business. So what we're going to do now, we've dropped a lot of great stuff, but we're not done. I'm going to take a quick break because I got to get something to drink. I got to get some some water. Got to get some water. (laughs) I'm going to take that. Okay. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about biggest obstacles. Mm -hmm. to starting a podcast or doing a podcast. And then conversely, what someone can do to get started. How does that sound? Sounds great. Hey, Steve. Oh, hey, David. What are you up to? I just got back from the doctor. And you're excited? Well, you know how recently I've been confused about my marketing? Yeah. Well, I've been unable to conduct simple marketing tasks. Plus, I have this persistent anxiety about posting on social media. I told this to the doctor, and he said I have MAP. MAP? What's that? Marketing analysis paralysis. It affects most creative business owners and in some cases can even lead to business failure. Oh man, but it seems like you're not worried about that happening to you. Yeah, the doctor gave me this pamphlet. Marketing Clarity Coaching Program by Tricycle Creative? Yep, they have this 10-week intensive coaching program where they can help me better define my customers, build my brand identity, and when it's over, I'll have hundreds of content ideas and opportunities. So obviously you're going to do it, right? Yeah, I've been putting this off for too long. I'm going to head over to GetMarketingClarity.com right now and book my 15-minute call. GetMarketingClarity.com? I think I'll head over there too. So we're back. I'm here with my guest, Aaron Hodges. Yo. So let's talk about biggest obstacles. Someone's listening to the show. They are definitely motivated. They want to start a podcast. But what's the thing in your experience and working with people kind of in (laughs) at that phase? What what are the things that typically stop people from starting a podcast? Fear. I think it's fear of putting yourself out there, of being good enough, that type of thing. And also just the unknown about the process and equipment that you should use. I think those are probably the biggest obstacles right there. Don't you think, though, I mean, like fear, I I understand, right? It's, It's scary. Cut open a mic or a camera. I get it, right? But on the equipment side, I do get how that can be intimidating. Mm -hmm. But I would also say... Like there are so many tools, platforms, services to make podcasting so easy. Totally. Like I spoke about the barrier to entry being almost none. And I think that's true, but that also is, you know, presents itself with a multitude of options. There's so many options. Mm, on that's true. Ho- which is the right one. Right. That kind of thing. Or paralysis by analysis, I think, is yeah. what, what we might talk about. Uh, so mm-hmm. there's so many options. So you're scared to make the wrong choice. I think people should understand that. Let's just speak on the hosting platforms, whether it be Anchor, Red Circle, Podbean. We could go Buzz on. Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout. Oh, nice. There's a lot. Sure. There's a lot yeah, of options, tons. some you can pay for, some are free, and sometimes you get what you pay for. But I don't think that people should be worried about choosing the wrong one, especially if you're just getting started. It's relatively easy to move your podcast to another hosting site. So I think that that's something people should get over as far as which platform should I choose. Just 
do a little bit of research, choose one, go for Pull it. Pull the trigger. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I actually, re- let's say past six months, I moved over from one platform to another. And yeah, you're right. Like it was, it was scary because I had a lot of episodes in the can and I was like, oh God, I'm going to lose them. But it was so easy. They are all very used to people jumping around. So almost all of them have like, it, it, it's a very easy process to do. And I think this is the other thing that's important is, you know, Aaron is an audio engineer, but you don't need to be an audio engineer to start a podcast. No. This is something also, I believe, Aaron, when people like come to you, if they are looking to just get started, do you kind of help work with them to maybe even like figure out, you know, the quote unquote best or best fit? Yeah. I mean, you could give me a budget. And you can say, I have this much money to spend on the thing. And I can give you very specific recommendations. Or we could just talk kind of broadly now because you could spend a lot of time just talking about this mic over that mic or this software or digital audio workstation. But I would put most of the emphasis on the mic. Get a good quality mic. Those are very important. And get the right mic. I think for people that are just starting out and don't have a lot of experience with audio, I would recommend getting a dynamic mic because you don't have to know as much and they're more rugged and they don't pick up as much room noise as a condenser mic might, right? So one thing you should understand is pickup pattern. How does the microphone actually take in the noise, right? Is it direct? Does it cover the whole room? Is it all around it? Right. Is it, they have patterns like, so I recently switched mics but I had a Blue Yeti, which is I, I do enjoy it as a microphone. Yeah. But it, it it has the ability you can switch what's called pickup patterns, you know, and that's all well and good. But but none of them were right on like direct, which is part of the reason why I did opt to switch it out. This is where to Aaron's point, just like with the platforms, I don't necessarily know if you can make a wrong decision. And I think when you're just getting started, maybe don't buy the $500 microphone. Right. No, right? don't like, do not do that. Yeah. Until like, you're committed. Until you're committed. Absolutely. I think the other thing outside of hardware that people struggle with, and you tell me, you know, is, is coming up with show episodes or concepts, right? Is that something that, that you've encountered in, in your work also? Yeah. I mean, it depends on what the goal is, right? I think you should try to go into it knowing what your goals are for the podcast and what you and maybe your co-host want to get out of it. If you have co-hosts, make sure you're on the same page. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) that's a biggie. That is absolutely a biggie. I love having guests and co-hosts. That's just my jam because I think I naturally am very collaborative. I certainly do shows solo, but that's just like how I operate. I really like that. And that's something that Anyone out there, if you're thinking about doing a podcast, think about that for your show. Do you want to do solo shows? You know, more solo shows. Not Do you maybe want to have it be an interview show? Do you want to have a co-host, right? Because if you really want to hitch your wagon to a co-host, you got to make sure that co-host is going to be available too, because that could inadvertently doom your podcast if that co-host is never available. Which I think is why most people might initially defer to doing a solo podcast because it's it's just so difficult to find the right partner sometimes. So you're right. It can be derailed just because of the level of commitment being different. But, you know, solo podcasts aren't for everybody. I listen to a handful of solo podcasts and some people do it well I think it's really hard to hold an audience, depending on what you're talking about and how you execute it. But if you're just talking for an hour straight or whatever it may be, it's a very difficult skill. Yeah. And how produced is that going to be to that point of having someone, whether, you know, whether they do it themselves or having someone come on and help them, you know, is the show an an entertainment show, Mm -hmm. an infotainment show? And like how many outside elements are there? You know, I think about a show, uh, one that I listen to a lot called Myths and Legends, And um, it's just a solo guy, but it's like really, there's a lot of really great production around it, you know, sound effects, Mm ambiance, you know, like, here's the thing, guys, I've said this before, I'll say it a million more times forever on this podcast. Don't let perfection get in the way of production, Mm -hmm. right? If you're just getting started, there are 
a number of things that you can do. And you know what? Let's just talk about them right now. So you want to get started with a podcast. We've convinced you. Wow, Ross and Aaron, this is a great idea. I want to do it. All right, Aaron, what is something that someone who wants to get started with a podcast, what's something they can do? A very simple one that you could do right now. You got this idea swirling around. You think you want to start a podcast. Take out your phone, open up the voice notes, hit record, and record a podcast that you have no intention of ever releasing. That way, you can kind of get the kinks out. You can figure out if you're a solo podcast, if you're a if you need a co-host, you might figure that out. The only way to figure that out is to make sure you listen back to it. Don't just record it, but listen to it. This is going to be the most painful piece of advice for some people out there. They're going to hate it. I get it. The thought yeah. of recording is terrifying <laughs> enough, but then actually listening back and trying to examine your own voice. I hate listening to my own voice. I know some people might like it. I enjoy your voice. Thank you. I hate mine. So we're like, <laughs> I enjoy your voice thoroughly. So it's just everyone has a, listen, everyone hates their voice. Let's just get over it. All right. So it's okay. It's not as bad as you think it is. You think it's 10 times worse than it is. That is true. But I, yeah, I would yeah. recommend just do a couple shows if you have to into your voice note or. I love this tip because it's so practical. There's not, there's no excuse standing between you and doing this. There's not. I mean, really, it's so incredibly simple for you to just like, this is something, a box you can check to get you closer to production or to get you right in there in production in taking a voice note and recording it. Nothing between, you know, there's, there's anyone can do it. Super simple. Yeah, I think you said it earlier to go from waiting to creating. Oh, of course. People always <laughs> sitting around. They're like, okay, I, I've got that. There's always some excuse. There is almost no excuse. Pretty much everyone out there, not everyone, I get it, but like most of you have a cell phone that I'm sure has voice notes, if not all of you do. Now, the other thing I talked about last episode on the YouTube SEO episode was a piece of advice from a YouTube creator, Sean Cannell. And he talked about, and, and I brought it up there because it's valuable. For your first 50, in this case, he was talking videos. For your first 50 videos, don't worry about anything. Anything at all. Other than just producing the shows. You can absolutely apply this to your podcast too. That is to say, don't worry about anything else. Just keep making and creating. Because just by doing that, I'm telling you, you're going to improve. You are going to improve. You're going to get more comfortable behind a mic. You're going to get more comfortable about the subject matter. You're going to, if you have a co-host, you're going to build the rapport with the co-host. You will naturally start to figure these things out. And then once you get past 50 or whatever, and you bring on a producer like Aaron, he's going to help you even more to be like, hey, here are some things that I picked up on as kind of an independent ear or independent ears. I have a bad ear, so it's only one ear for me, but he has two, so he's very valuable to me, right? <laughs> that that I always tell him if, I, if something is bad or I don't hear, oh, that's in my left ear, that's my bad ear. Is that so true, or are you just hear. joking around? It's very true. No, okay. I have uh, hearing loss, partial, but oh. it's pretty bad in my left ear. Oh, okay. So, yeah, whenever I mess up, it's because it clearly went to my left ear, and I, did, I, I didn't know, just so you know. But just... Make your podcast, focus on the creating. And then just by doing that, you'll build up like, you know, like again, me in the backyard, lifting my weights in my onesie, you're going to build up. You're going to be able to move off of the pink weights and onto the circle weights that I use. I don't know. The, the, the 20 pound weights. You're not going to need the pink weights anymore, but you got to start there. That's where you got to start it's just really important. Yeah, I think you're right. And it's hard to shut off that part of your brain that is looking for validation and likes and engagement. Oh yeah. oh yeah. How many downloads did I get? I'm not saying you can't put the episodes out there. I'm just saying don't obsess over it. 
use it to inform but not dictate. I say that a lot with my stuff. Yeah, you know? I think that's right. And then maybe even you're not thinking about doing 50 episodes, right? Sure. It depends on what type of show you're going to do. Yep. So again, that goes back to knowing what you hope to get out of this and what you're trying to execute going into it. Is this a 10 episode run of podcasts? Is this a weekly show that you're going to do indefinitely? Then you're going to hopefully reach 50 episodes if you're doing it weekly and that's what it is. But yeah, I think you're right. You're going to have to forgive yourself a little bit for some hiccups in the beginning and know that unless you're a celebrity or have some kind of fame attached to you, you're going to have five people listen to your first podcast. Thanks, mom. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully you grow. But I think that should also give you a little bit of comfort knowing that you can get the early hiccups out and not worry about having to nail it right out of the gate. I, I think that that should give you a little bit of comfort that you have room to grow and develop as you go. I think the other thing we've talked about it throughout this episode, but if you are just looking to get started or maybe you have a podcast and maybe you feel like it's kind of you're losing steam on it or you're struggling with it is they can actually contact and work with you, right? So talk a little bit about, you know, where people can find you and just a little bit about your service, Aaron. Well, thanks, Ross. Yeah, and you can yeah. find out more about the services that we offer at youluckydogpodcast.com. You know, it's a variety of different things that we offer. We can help you develop your show from scratch. We can take on shows that are you already do. You know, you don't have time for it. Maybe you just want to give somebody these files to edit and make a cohesive show out of it. Maybe you're a business that wants to start a podcast as well development from scratch or enhancing what you already do, whether it's editing, mixing, maybe you want to highlight clip, you know, stuff that you can repurpose for social media. That's what we're getting into. Um, the marketing, not my strong suit, but that's why I talked to Ross. But I and my team can definitely put together a very well produced and a quality sounding show. Aaron has, you know, he's, he's got like the bat phone number, for me, <laughs> you know, and oftentimes clients that go and work with him when it comes to content repurposing or some of those marketing pieces, he'll absolutely bring me in. And that's where we've collaborate together, um, you know, with our two services, because there's overlap, right? It's, you're creating a podcast, a piece of media, right? But it's also a piece of your marketing. And um, I love when our forces get to combine like like Ultron or not Ultron, uh, Voltron, more like a Voltron or something. Just again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Aaron, for me, has been a tremendous, tremendous addition to my workflow and a great investment because I do know how to do this stuff. I do know how to edit. I, do, like, I know how to do it. However, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now. Am I the best at it? No, I'm not. Aaron is much better at it than I am. Also, here's the thing. I run a business. I have my business to run, right? And there is a tremendous value for me to be able to do the show, give Aaron the files, have this rapport with him that we built that, and that you can work with him and you, you build it real fast and he'll know exactly what you want. He turns it out. And it's just like, I can get on with my day versus spending the hour or two, depending on how messy a show it is, three hours, you know, <laughs> editing audio. Yeah. He takes care of it for me. Yeah. And he does a better job than I would. Well, th so thank I you, know Bruce. there's a lot of you out there listening who probably are creative business owners that say, yeah, I can record my show and I can edit my show. And that's great. That that And honestly, that might be where you start for your first 20, 50 episodes, whatever. But I'm telling you, once you get to a place where you have this momentum and you're able to work with someone like Aaron or to that extent when it comes to your marketing, even like me with your coaching, to give it to someone that's going to take that ball and run with it and then you don't have to worry about it and you can worry about the other things, it's awesome. So I fully endorse Aaron's work. And if you're out there and you're wanting to start a podcast, 
definitely, or you again, you have an existing podcast. You want to make it better. You lucky dog podcast.com. Aaron, any, any last words on your first edition, your first episode of tripod? Well, I mean, I just want to add to what you were just saying. We're talking specifically about podcasts, but I think for business owners and solopreneurs, as, as you call them, I think it's a difficult thing to learn to delegate things. Yeah. You want to be able to know everything about everything and have your hands on everything. And it's, it's hard to let go. And I know that it's hard to let go of a podcast and put it in someone else's hands sometimes because, hey, that's your, that's your baby. And I appreciate that. So I think that's the biggest thing that I want to get across as far as what I offer and what you lucky dog podcast offers is that we take it seriously. This is your show. This is your baby. And it means something to you. So if you're trusting me to take care of your baby, then I will hand the baby back in better shape than I got it. It's the Boy Scout motto of campsites. You leave the campsite better than you found it. If you give Aaron <laughs> your podcast baby with, with a birthmark, you're going to get it back. It's going to be gone. It's amazing. <laughs> he does tremendous work with your baby, with your podcast. He does great work. So with that, again, I want to remind you, go check him out, youluckydogpodcast.com. And I have really enjoyed all of these No Facebook November series. If you haven't already, go back and listen to them. They are chock full of great, great stuff. And again, I just want to say, you don't have to give up Facebook to do them. This is just the premise upon which I do my Novembers is that I just step away from Facebook. And, you know, I really don't miss it. I don't miss it at all. So we'll see what happens in December, whether this becomes a uh, permanent, semi-permanent, what it looks like. And of course, I will keep you updated always via this podcast. And if you want to check out show notes, past episodes, again, listen to the online player and skip around. You can do all that at tripodpodcast.com. Thanks for listening to Tripod. Be sure to subscribe and rate the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. For show notes and past episodes, go to tripodpodcast.com. Connect with Tricycle Creative on social media at Hello Tricycle and learn more about how we can help you with your marketing at tricycle-creative.com.